Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tutor IMG's short medical series. So in part one of our non-reassuring fetal heart tracings, we talked about some of the features of a non-reassuring fetal heart tracing. Now we're going to be taking a look at how to manage such a tracing. So when we have a non-reassuring uh, fetal heart tracing, our next step is to figure out how serious this is, whether um, certain conservative measures can resolve this or not. So our next step can be fetal scalp stimulation. We can also use vibroacoustic measures to see if the baby can be stimulated and its heart rate, um, you know, the abnormality resolved. There are some general measures that we can put into play. For example, changing the position of the mum, putting her on a good supply of oxygen, giving her an IV fluid bolus. And remember, these are all um, your points to write down when you're managing your uh, short essay questions. IV fluid bolus can help if she is on any kind of uterotonic um, drugs, you need to stop those. You might even want to give her some tocolytics, right, to help improve things if just stopping the uterotonic drugs doesn't really resolve or help with the abnormal tracing. When you have observed these general measures and done some fetal scalp stimulation, you should observe for a few minutes and check to see for resolution of the um, non-reassuring pattern. If there is no resolution, then 10 minutes of observation should be enough for you to then make up your mind, especially, as I mentioned before, if variability uh, is also declining in the baby's heart rate. What is it that we do? Of course, we head towards expedited delivery. One of the main things that we have to um, always contend with is fetal scalp blood sampling. What I want you to uh, remember now for the boards that this is not usually the correct answer. It's not a favored option. It is still um, in the books in Canada for one of the ways in which to further analyze a, a, a non-reassuring fetal heart tracing, but there are quite a few things that limit its use and that is the fact that there are quite a few false um, positives in this result, which means a number of times, you know, um, the pH might indicate in the need for emergent intervention whilst um, the need really wasn't there. Another limitation is the need for the expertise. Another limitation, of course, is the need for the fetal um, injury that you have to inflict. Another limitation is the presence of infections, active HIV or herpes in the mum, which you obviously do not want to transfer to the baby. Also is the GBS status of the mum. If it's unknown or suspicious, you do not want to uh, go ahead and introduce any kind of infection to the baby. So um, the false positives, of course, lead to unnecessary cesarean sections, um, which are a drain to the, to the um, to the government funds. And inside of these um, features, fetal scalp blood sampling has now largely been replaced and isn't really relied upon too much, neither is it done too much in uh, the usual ops wards. Thank you very much for joining me for this short video. If you like our videos, please keep supporting our channel and um, keep encouraging us to make more such videos. Thank you very much.